The Battle of An Lok was a major battle of the Vietnam War that lasted for 66 days and culminated in a tactical victory for South Vietnam. The struggle for An Lok in 1972 was an important battle of the war, as South Vietnamese forces halted the North Vietnamese advance towards Saigon. Chapter 1 Background An Lok is the capital of Binh Phuc province located northwest of Military Region 3. During North Vietnam's Easter Offensive of 1972, An Lok was at the center of People's Army of Vietnam strategy, its location on Route QL-13 near Base Area 708 in Cambodia allowed safeguarding supplies based out of a neutral location in order to reduce exposure to U.S. bombing. To protect this critical area, the Army of the Republic of Vietnam had essentially a single division in Binh Phuc Province, the 5th Division, 35-6 during the battle, the 5th Division was outnumbered by a combined force consisting of three Pavan and Viet Cong divisions. This fighting which ensued became the most protracted conflict of the 1972 Easter Offensive. On the same day that Lok Ninh, a small town 20 miles north of An Lok on the border with Cambodia was assaulted, the Pavan 7th Division launched an attack on Route QL-13 in an attempt to cut off An Lok from Saigon. To control QL-13 was to control the road to Saigon, roughly 90 miles to the south. This prevented resupply of ARVN forces in an Lok battle. Chapter 2 Battle On the evening of 7 April, elements of the Pavan 9th Division overran Quan Loi base camp. Its defenders, the 7th Regiment of the 5th Division, were ordered to destroy their heavy equipment and fall back to an Lok. 70 once captured, the Pavan used Quan Loi as a staging base for units coming in from Cambodia to join the siege of An Lok, 91 key members of Coven were based there to oversee the battle, 119 on 7 April the 21st Division was alerted for movement from 4 Corps to 3 Corps. On 10 April the first elements of this division were already deployed to Lake K, 146 on 8 April, the small town of Lok Ninh was overrun and about half of the defenders escaped to An Lok, 56-57 The ARVN defenders of An Lok were made up of several units of the 5th Division, including the Division's 8th Regiment with about 2,100 men, the 7th Regiment which was short 1 battalion, and only had 850 men, the 9th Regiment, most of which was destroyed at Lok Ninh, had only had 200 men. Task Force 52, 500 men, the 3rd Ranger Group, 1,300 men, as well as Bin Long Provincial Regional Force, Popular Forces and People's Self-Defense Forces, about 2,000 men, 80 the defenders were later reinforced by the Elite 81st Ranger Group and the 1st Airborne Brigade, brought in by air because QL-13 was blocked by the Pavan. Because the ARVN defense had little artillery, it was heavily reliant on U.S. air support. Other reinforcements consisted of the 21st Division, which was plagued by a very slow move from the Delta area in the south of the country and cleared QL-13 after protracted fighting. The ARVN defenders did have one card to play throughout the battle, the immense power of U.S. air support. The use of United States Air Force B-52 Strato Fortress bombers bombs on one run, in a close support tactical role, as well as AC-119 Stinger and AC-130 E Spectre gunships, fixed-wing cargo aircraft of varying sizes, H-1 Cobra attack helicopters and Republic of Vietnam Air Force A-37s. These methods worked to blunt the Pavan offensive. At this stage in the war, the Pavan often attacked with PT-76 amphibious and T-54 medium tanks spearheading the advance, usually preceded by a massive artillery barrage. These tactics reflected Soviet doctrine, as the Pavan had been supplied with Soviet and Chinese communist equipment, including jets, artillery, and surface-to-air missiles since the beginning of the war. The battle eventually stagnated and became a periodic trade of artillery barrages. This was most probably a result of casualties sustained in the frustrated attacks on heavily entrenched enemy positions in control of a withering array of supporting firepower. On 12 April a relief force of the 32nd Regiment, 21st Division departed Lake K to reopen QL-13 to Chonthan Camp, 30 kilometers south of Unlock, 
131 The first attack on the city occurred on 13 April, and was preceded by a powerful artillery barrage. The Pavan captured several hills to the north and penetrated the northern portion of the city held by the 8th Regiment and 3rd Ranger Group, 88-97 ARVN soldiers were not accustomed to dealing with tanks, but early success with the M72 law, including efforts by teenage members of the PSDF, went a long way to helping the overall effort, 90 The 5th Division Commander, General Hung, later ordered tank-destroying teams be formed by each battalion, which included PSDF members who knew the local terrain and could help identify strategic locations to ambush tanks, 98 They took advantage of the fact that the Pavan forces, who were not used to working with tanks, often let the tanks get separated from their infantry by driving through ARVN defensive positions. At that point, all alone inside ARVN lines, they were vulnerable to being singled out by tank-destroying teams. The 15th of April saw the second attack on the city. The Paven were concerned that because the ARVN 1st Airborne Brigade had air assaulted into positions west of the city, that they were now coming to reinforce the defenders. Again the Paven preceded their attack with an artillery barrage followed by a tank infantry attack. Like before, their tanks became separated from their infantry and fell prey to ARVN anti-tank weapons, 101 Paven infantry followed behind the tank deployment, assaulted the ARVN defensive positions, and pushed farther into the city. B-52 strikes helped break up some Paven units assembling for the attack. This engagement lasted until tapering off on the afternoon of April 16th. 103 unable to take the city, the Paven kept it under constant artillery fire. They also moved in more anti-aircraft guns to prevent aerial resupply. Heavy anti-aircraft fire kept Rivnov helicopters from getting into the city after the 12th of April. 113 in response, fixed-wing Rivnov aircraft made attempts, but after suffering losses, the USAF took over on the 19th of April. 113 the USAF used C-130s to parachute in supplies, but many missed the defenders and several aircraft were shot down or damaged. Low altitude drops during day and night did not do the job. So by the 2nd of May, the USAF began using high-altitude low-opening techniques. With far greater success, this method of resupply was utilized until 25 June, when the siege was lifted and aircraft could land at Amlork, 115 after making slow progress. On the 22nd of April the 32nd Regiment encountered a roadblock of the Paven 101st Regiment 15 km north of Lake A. From 24 April the division engaged the Paven in a two-pronged attack to clear the road with the 32nd Regiment attacking from the north and the 33rd Regiment attacking from the south. These attacks eventually forced the 101st Regiment to withdraw west on 27 April, leaving one battalion to cover the withdrawal for a further two days. The 31st Regiment was then lifted by helicopters to 6 km north of Chonthan where it fought the Paven 165th Regiment, 7th Division, later reinforced by the 209th Regiment, for the next 13 days, 132 on the 11th of May the Paven launched a massive all-out infantry and armor assault on Amlork. The attack was carried out by units of the 5th and 9th Paven Divisions, 145 This attack was repulsed by a combination of U.S. air power and the determined stand of ARVN soldiers on the ground. Almost every B-52 in Southeast Asia was called in to strike the massing enemy tanks and infantry. The commander of the defending forces had placed a grid around the town creating many boxes, each measuring 1 km by 3 km in size, which were given a number and could be called by ground forces at any time. The B-52 cells were guided onto these boxes by ground-based radar. During 11 and the 12th of May, the USAF managed a B-52 mission every 55 minutes for 30 hours straight, using 170 B-52s and smashing whole regiments of Paven in the process. Despite this air support, the Paven made gains, and were within a few hundred meters of the ARVN 5th Division Command Post, 150 ARVN counterattacks were able to stabilize the situation. By the night of the 11th of May, the Paven consolidated their gains, 
152 during that day an A-37B piloted by First Lieutenant Michael Blassie was shot down while providing air support. His body was recovered in late 1972 and he was separated from the identification documents recovered leading to him being later designated as the unknown service member from the Vietnam War buried at the tomb of the unknown soldier at Arlington National Cemetery. On the 12th of May the Pavan launched new attacks in an effort to take the city, but again failed, 153 the Pavan launched one more attack on the 19th of May in honor of Ho Chi Minh's birthday. The defenders were not surprised, and the attack was broken up by U.S. air support and an ambush by the ARVN paratroopers, 157 on 13 May with intensive air support the 31st Regiment finally overran the Pavan positions and extended ARVN control to 8 km north of Chom Tham. The 32nd Regiment then deployed into the Tau O area a further 5 km north, where they ran into the 209th Regiment's well-prepared blocking positions, which stopped the division's advance for 38 days despite extensive artillery and air support, including B-52 strikes. This stalemate would continue until the Pavan withdrew from Unlock, 131-3 on 15 May a task force of the 15th Regiment, 9th Division, which was redeployed from the Mekong Delta, and the 9th Armored Cavalry Squadron, 21st Division moved north, east of QL-13 bypassing the Tao-O roadblock to establish a fire support base at Tankai 10 km south of Unlock. On 20 May the Pavan 141st Regiment attacked the base at Tankai and continued attacking unsuccessfully for three days against a determined defense before withdrawing, 133 in mid-July the 21st Division was replaced by the 25th Division and it completed the destruction of the remaining Pavan strongpoints at Tau, Oh, by the 20th of July. 135 on 13 slash the 14th of June, a regiment of the 18th Division was landed in Unlock to reinforce the exhausted 5th Division. On the 17th of June, the 48th Regiment, 5th Division, reoccupied Hill 169, allowing them to guide air and artillery strikes on Pavan forces. 134 to 5 by the 18th of June 1972, the Third Corps commander declared the battle was over. 135 Despite this declaration, Unlock remained under Pavan artillery fire. On 9 July, 3rd Regional Assistance Command Deputy Commander Brigadier General Richard J. Tallman and his aides had just landed at Unlock when they were hit by Pavan artillery fire. Three of the group were killed instantly, while Tallman and two others were wounded. The wounded men were evacuated to the 3rd Field Hospital in Saigon where Tallman died of his wounds. He was the last U.S. Army general to die in South Vietnam. Chapter 3, Aftermath The victory, however, was not complete. QL-13 still was not open. On the 11th of July the entire 18th Division arrived at Unlock to replace the 5th Division, 135 the 18th Division would spread out from Unlock and push the Pavan back, increasing control in the area. On 8 August the 18th Division launched an assault to retake Quan Loi, but was stopped by the Pavan in the base's reinforced concrete bunkers. A second attack was launched on 9 August with limited gains. Attacks on the base continued for two weeks, eventually one-third of the base was captured, 198 finally, the ARVN attacked the Pavan-occupied bunkers with tow missiles and M202 rockets, breaking the Pavan defense and forcing the remaining defenders to flee the base, 201 the fighting at Unlock demonstrated the continued ARVN dependence on U.S. air power and U.S. advisors. For the Pavan, it demonstrated their logistical constraints, following each attack, resupply times caused lengthy delays in their ability to properly defend their position, 213 to 214.